Hello everyone, um, so I wanted to take a few minutes to go through the way I'm using uh, Vim, actually NeoVim, to work as a Julia development environment. Um, there's a couple different tools that are bundled together to make the experience user-friendly for some definition of user-friendliness and I um, just want to go through a quick example of uh, how my system is set up. Uh, the way I work and what are the tools that are um, involved. So um, for that to work, you need to have uh, not the base version of Vim, you need the NeoVim fork, which is um, slightly more than a fork. It's involves some of rewrites um, and you need a version that is at least uh, 0 0.5 here. The reason for which you need 0 0.5, uh, which is a nightly version usually, uh, it's because in order to have the uh, auto-completion and the language server features that are going to work, you need this version and not the release version, which is 0 0.3 uh, or 4, something like that. So, um, besides that, NeoVim is something that you will are going to use exactly like uh, Vim. I've, in fact, aliased it to Vim in my... Uh, in my computer, um, and and that's what we're going to use as a uh, an editor. So um, I'm on the a Julia project here. Uh, let's have a look at what's in the uh, project. Um, .toml file. There's distribution random and uh, stats plots. So if I do a new file dot uh, let's call that test dot gl and vim test dot gl. That's going to be uh, a little bit of activity here where it says initializing Julia and that is actually the uh, language server that is starting. So when you're using VS Code or Atom, there's also the language server that is going to start. It's going to handle things like completion, variable names, uh, jumping from a function to its definition, seeing the tokens, um, renaming a variable and uh, and all of the things that make um, life easier. So the next step is it's also indexing the packages and indexing the packages does exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to look through the project file and have a look at what are the exported methods, what are the exported types, what are the exported variables, which documentation and all of that which is going to make the auto completion um, work. So we're just going to go through a very simple example and then I'll dig in um, what are the packages that are required to make that work and how I have them um, set up. So um, whenever you're indexing a package for the first time, it's going to take a little bit of time, but then um, then it's done and, and you, can, you can start typing. You could actually start editing uh, immediately, pretty much. I'm just um, waiting for the um, language server to be running. Okay, it's done. So we are going to be doing uh, using random using stats um, and so whenever we have uh, typed stats um, one thing that we see is all of these stats API stats based stats fun stats plot all of the package that we know about because they're in the project or they're in the manifests uh, so we're going to be using stats plots um, oh we're also using to be uh, also going to be using distributions. I'm going to set a random seed and so when we do random dot we'd get the same thing that we would uh, if we add the um, the uh, VS Code version. So random.seed is a function whenever we hover on that in the menu we uh, get the different examples, we can get the documentation, we're going to use this usual seed of 42 um, and that's it. Okay, so next what we are going to do is uh, create a distribution. I'm going to do a couple of things here and you'll see what in a minute. Uh, load packages. I am going to set the seed create a distribution. So our distribution is going to be... So one thing that is interesting with um, um, the Julia plugin in, uh, in Vim is whenever you want to type something as uh, a Unicode character, 
you can just type and uh, move on. You don't need to press tab as soon as the it stops matching a string, it is going to uh, replace this string. So if we want to do uh, CRD for distribution, it's going to be equal to uh, beta, and beta is a function from distribution. So then again, you get the um, you get the documentation here, like point two point two point six, whatever. Um, then we are going to randomly sample from this distribution, uh, and so our uh, random numbers are going to be rand of d. That's a variable, sorry, d, uh, and we're going to get ten thousand. Uh, now we can do a little plot, which is going to be histogram uh, of random numbers. So um, that's where we get the first. Uh, we get the first like, oh, histogram is not uh, is not defined here. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay, let's let's save. Um, and now what I would like to do with this code is I would like to um, run it right oh now i'm going to do a couple uh a couple things actually before i'm going to pretend that i haven't read the manual very well and i'm sort of inconsistent with my spacing right uh, i'm also add a loop that does nothing here just so we can see why loop that does nothing and it's going to be for i equal one to two hundred um do nothing and okay so one of the things that i'm using quite a lot is a julia formatter package uh that i have either aliased to a uh hotkey which is in my case is leader jf for leader julia format or you can just do um, Julia formatter format. So if we do Julia formatter format, it's uh, it's going to start the STDIO server. It's going to read the file and it's going to pass it through the Julia formatter package. And what we should see in a minute is the uh, the f the, um, the the code sort of jumping around because it's going to make some um, some changes to. Uh, respect the coding convention. Uh, let me just that GF. All right. So a couple of different things that happened. It's been fixing all of the spacing issues, uh, and it has been replacing the equal by an in in the loop. Um, and and the reason it's been doing that is because. Uh, you can actually, I'm going to show you that in a minute, um, configure your Julia formatter package in Vim so that it uses blue style, which is the style that I like, uh, in order to make sure that your code is going to be, um, uh, it's going to be uh, corresponding to the standard. It, it also, Julia formatter also does an interesting thing, which is, uh, let's do fill 0, 0 0.2. Uh, lab equal. Let's just write a long line. Um, we'll do frame equal box. That's not a. Uh, well, let's do. Okay, I'll do like ten thousand random numbers. Julia formatter is going to wrap the long line in a way that is um, that makes sense. It's going to oh, it, it also does this thing that I I quite like, which is it's separating the keyword from the non-keyword argument using a semicolon. Uh, and whenever you write a uh, very long line, it has to be longer than I think. Right. 80 columns, uh, it is going to rewrap that as a block of text. And so you get one argument on each line. Okay, so what we've been doing so far is is mostly um, typing some code and not running it. So in order to run it, um, what I'm, I'm using is a plugin called VimSlime. Uh, I'm just going to navigate back to where I was. And 
in, in order to make Vim Slime work, I have uh, I'm using t uh, Screen. Sorry, and uh, not Tmux. You can use Tmux. You can use Screen. You could use a Vim terminal, and you could use any other terminal application. I'm using Screen uh, because Screen does one thing that I like, and it's 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 able to go into the background and, and keep running. I made a little uh, alias called GL, and what GL does is it is going to start a, a new Julia instance within a screen. So you can see here at the bottom we are within a screen. Um, and it's going to start in project mode so that we can directly sta start um, working. So. Uh, the reason I've been using uh, the pound sign and then two person sign here is because I want my code to be organized in cells, much like we would in a um, in a Jupyter notebook. And so I have another uh, shortcut, which is leader R to run the content of a cell. So when I do leader R, it's going to send every line to um, it's going to send every line to the uh, screen instance. <laughs> Let me just uh, grab some battery before this all shuts down unexpectedly. Almost there. Yep. One half of the problem solved. Other half. Good. Okay. No still here. So. Um, and it's it's just it's basically taking the the code that is in the Vim window and putting it back into um, screen. So one thing that I like with screen is that you can detach it, which is uh, um, Control A, Control D. So I'm closing my screen here. It doesn't appear anymore. I can you know what I can close this terminal. I don't care. And one thing that's pretty nice is that I can still run things. I'm going to set the seed create the beta distribution, create my random numbers. Um, let's do that. And then we're going to go here and do, uh, let's navigate back to where we were. No, um, sorry. Using my other alias, which is attach Julia, A-G-L. And that is going to bring us back to uh, where we were. So we have our distribution and we have our list of um, random number. So that's, pretty nice and it is uh it's interesting if you want to get a window out of the way uh let's let's move on here i'm using my mouse which is not what you're supposed to do with a like tabbing with uh sorry a uh, tiling window manager but whatever we can pass the comment for plots uh let me reload that and what is interesting is that when you would be working in something like uh, VS Code, right? You would have everything would be in the same window, and the window is this unbreakable object. If you want to move your code, or if you want to move your RPL, if you want to move your plot, they all move together. Here, uh, not so much. If I need more space and I want to have my uh, REPL in my second desktop. I just send it there. I send my figure in the third desktop and I can switch from one to the other. Uh, if you have a multi-head uh, uh, setting, like a two, three monitors, I don't know how many you use. I use two usually. Uh, back when I had an office that I could physically occupy. Um, that's really cool because you could have you uh, you could have your code on one side and you could have your RPL and you could have your figures and you could have a PDF open whatever, uh, so you can really decide what you want to um, what you want to use and where you want to put your things. Um, so that's about it, I would say. Um, that's I I don't know why. Um, uh, why is the language server is suddenly choking on the uh, histogram thing? We're just going to restart it and make sure that it's like happy. Um, but anyway, so that's the very basic. Um, the way it's working is actually fairly simple. Let me just kill that uh, and let's go into config. So the configuration of uh, we're going to do in, uh, go into the NeoVim folders. Configuration of NeoVim uses the same init.vim 
um, folder uh, file that Vim would be using, you'd also have a Lua version. If you know Lua, which I don't, and I just I, I know oinit.vim works, and that's what I use. Uh, so let's have a look at init.vim. There's mine's probably too long. It's about like 200 lines, just because there's a bunch of plugins in here. Um, that are here to add some little functionalities. It, it doesn't really matter, and I I've just like accumulated a lot of things over the years. Um, anyway, the one we need for Vim to work are uh, these four lines here. We need um, the Julia Vim from Editor Support. That's going to be the language. It's going to be all of the Julia motions. Let me show you an example. Uh, let's say I want to select this entire call. I can do uh, VAG for uh, visually select around the Julia code. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to work. It doesn't. Anyway. Uh, oh, it's working in loops. Sorry. VAG. Select around the loop. And if I want to select the inside of a loop, I do VIG visually inside the Julia code. Um, that, that's useful if you want to take something within a loop, move it out, or if you want to change an entire loop um, from one place to another, that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, Julia formatter is what uh, I'm using to make sure that the code is, uh, is properly formatted. Uh, Vim Slime is the one I'm using to send the code from the editor window to the IREPL. And uh, cock.nvim is the uh, concurrer of completion extension which takes care of integrating with the uh, language server. So if you have all of that, all of these four uh, plugins set up, it's all good. You can start using uh, Julia as a uh, an editor. What I've done is I've removed all of my uh, Julia configuration from the main, main file. Uh, the reason for what which I've done that is, let me go here, it's in FT plugins, julia.vim, let's close that. Um, it's because things like uh, LaTeX to Unicode uh, completion is going to interact with some packages like Pandoc. It's going to do weird thing when you're trying to write maths in Pandoc or I, and I know it's a Julia thing that I'm using when I'm writing Julia code. And I, anyway, I know there is a, um, a way for me to activate that from other contexts if I want. So whatever is in this file, which is in ft plugin slash julia.vim, I know it's only going to be loaded when I'm using uh, Julia. So I have the uh, LaTeX to Unicode. Uh, it's not set up by tab. There's a mapping if I want. I have my little alias for the Julia formatting. Uh, it can be like the entire file or it can be whatever I'm uh, visually selecting, so there are no remap and v no remap. Um, there's the option for the Julia formatter, it's just I'm using blue style and nothing else. And what I've done here is the uh, default configuration for slime. So this one is um, a little bit more interesting, barely. What I'm doing here is saying uh, whenever I'm using slime with a Julia file, I am going to send it to a screen whose name is GL and whose uh, window position is zero. Uh, I, I don't want Vim Slime to ask me every time. Like if I'm working within Julia, by default, I do leader R. I want that to go into the screen session named GL and window zero. And I, I'm sure it's here. Um, the reason I'm sure it's here or not is that I've sort of set up my polybar to write a little Julia icon here whenever I have such a session running. And whenever I see that, I know I can run it. Whenever I don't see that, I know I need to use a GL alias to start one in the correct folder. Um, and I've also added the cell delimiter, which I've picked to be uh, a common sign and then 2% signs. So that leader R is going to send the cell uh, as opposed to just the line or the entire code block. So slime is, uh, is it's reasonably well context aware. So if you have a block of code and you're within the block and you do command R, it's going to send all contiguous lines to it. 
uh, if you have uh, a block of code that has empty line in the middle, that's when you're going to be using something like VAG, like select around the block, and then leader, uh, sorry, control C, control C is a, a slime shortcut to, um, to send that. Um, but what's interesting that there's this very little configuration that actually goes into making Vim work as a uh, Julia development environment. Uh, and so what you get in return is uh, very nice formatting. Uh, it's the whole Vim experience, which you like or you don't. I, I, I love it. It's sort of an acquired test, I guess. Um, all of the completion and, and whatever auto-completion feature you would get in VS Code because um, the Cog plugin that we're using for Vim is, is literally the same language server that we, uh, we would be using within VS Code. And one thing that I, I think is interesting is the ability to manipulate your, um, your window in a way that you really want. So if you want to move your figures out of the way, if you want to hide your REPL, and I mean literally close the window and still be sending information to Julia in the background, you can do that. Uh, I think it's pretty nice. You can also... Um, you can also open your screen, SSH onto a machine, start Julia here. If the screen has the right name, then it's going to, that's where Julia is going to be computing. I, I, I sort of like the flexibility of this approach um, a lot. Um, and, and Vim is a very good text editor, so that's how it is. Um, and the reason I'm going through all of these um, plugins and all this functionality is that when when I started using Vim with Julia, uh, Neo Vim with Julia two years ago, a year ago, it was sort of complex to get it to work. You had to fiddle with the Neo Vim language server um, architecture. There, there was some configuration involved and then when I reinstalled everything a couple of weeks back on a, uh, a new machine, I, I I started re-researching the different steps that I needed to do in order to get to um, um, to a functional Vim editor for Julia, and it's it's much simpler. Um, it's much simpler than it ever was. So that's uh, oh, you use NeoVim with uh, with Julia. Uh, I I highly suggest you try it out. Vim is not for everyone, but it's going to be present on. Um, on many environment and it's a it's a pretty powerful text editor so that's uh that was it and uh i'm going to be posting a, a video of this stream on uh on youtube in a few uh in a few hours thanks everyone